extreme close up. No. So make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video because I'll be giving away some of the crafts I'll be making. So make sure to stay to the end to learn how to do that. This was a really hard craft, guys. So I'm gonna like rate this like a level. You gotta have skill. So probably like level eight craft master. So the first craft we're going to do is the clay figures. So what you're gonna need for this craft is, I use the Crayola model magic clay, split rings, eye pins, jewelry clippers, and then a chain, kind of up to you what kind of chain you want. I just use like a silver chain that I found and then an exacto knife. First thing you're gonna do is pick which kind of Pokemon you wanna do. I started out with Pikachu, so I'll show you that one right now. And then I just started out making a ball for the head, a ball for the torso, and then four balls for the arms and legs. And then to make the ears, I just balled up two balls about the exact same size. And make sure to make them into balls first, because then you can kind of tell if you have a little bit more clay in one than you do the other. And then I kind of just use my fingers to kind of like form it into a triangle. And then once I got the triangle like the right size and shape that I wanted it to be, I cut off the very tip with the X-Acto knife and then made a black ball and made two of them that were the exact same size and everything. And then made that into a smaller triangle and then put that on the tip. And you kind of need to like smush it there and rearrange it. It's very delicate work. That's why I like the X-Acto knife. The X-Acto knife helps you like just move things a little bit because if you like push one thing then the eyeballs get huge and you didn't want them to get huge. They got really big. Yeah, I'll show you the picture that I was going for, <laughs> right over here or something. Then once you get that, you can either keep them as just little clay figures, or you can turn them into keychains, is what I did. So I'm going to rate this next craft maybe like a level 5, so you need to be like a moderate crafter. You don't need a ton of skill, but you need like some patience. This is one, if you like mess up one part, you mess up the whole thing. Isn't that great? <laughs> so much fun. So what you'll need for this craft is crochet thread, I think. then you'll need a hammer, a wood slab, wire nails, and then I did white spray paint and then black acrylic paint. So the first thing you want to do is get your things painted. So you'll take your wood slab and you can paint it whatever color you want, but I just chose black because I thought it would be a nice contrast to my Pikachu. So you'll paint that, let it dry, it took maybe like, we only did one coat, I made my friend Tiffany do it. Yeah, I made my friend Tiffany do it. I'll show you right now. <laughs> and then I actually had, they didn't have any of those white nails, so I actually had to go and paint each individual nail white. So that's why the white spray paint comes in handy right here. So I just laid out all the nails on a little protective thing outside and then spray painted them, which doesn't work very well. So I would just recommend just hand painting the tips of them. Kind of gross. So I just recommend, I actually went back over and painted them white after I spray painted them. So, just some more work, <laughs> just more things to do. <laughs> and then what you're going to do is go online, find a picture you like, and make sure it's one that doesn't have like a ton of detail, but still gets what you want to do right because it's going to turn into a string art. So you got to make sure that this picture is going to be like, what is that when you do it? So make sure it's like a pretty familiar shape for Pikachu. So I picked this one. I'll show you. And then what you're gonna do is cut around it and make sure to give yourself a nice wide border around it because everywhere where there's a line, that's where you're gonna nail. <laughs> and I didn't think about that and I cut really close and it made problems later. So don't do what I did. <laughs> and then what you're going to do, you can either do it two ways. Either you can do what I did and I just got double-sided tape and stuck it all over and then put it onto my wooden slab when it was all dry or you can flip it over and trace, like draw like crazy with chalk all over it and then you'll put it on your slab and then you'll actually trace out everywhere that you're going to nail so all the lines that you want to include and that way it leaves like this chalk imprint on. Now the problem with that is that sometimes it get wiped off and then you don't know where to nail. So if you want to be lazy like me then just stick it on and then you have to rip it off later. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> that part actually wasn't hard. That's a level 8 hardness with me clippers and stuff. And I kind of judged it from how wide apart, try to make it as even as possible, but then in some places where you want a sharper corner, then you want to make sure that you have a nail there because if you don't put a nail there, it's going to get lost in the string. It's not going to happen. 
And then what I did next to get it started, I started to tie a knot, but I didn't tie it all the way. And then I placed it where I want the yellow to start out, so kind of below the ear a little bit, because I didn't want to get the tip of the ear, because the tip of the ear is black. And then I tightened it around that nail and then just started stringing like crazy. I know some people get really, really thick string, but I kind of just wanted it to be enough that it covered it, you could see the outline, but not like, hey, that's a spider web. No, it's Pikachu. It's a Pikachu. It is. Then make sure when you're all done getting the colors where you want them to be, to make sure to do one outline with your like base colors. So mine was yellow, so I made sure I went around each one. And then you have a beautiful string art to look at. It's so pretty. Okay, so the last craft we're gonna do is the pillow. Yeah, I know, pillow, yeah! Yeah, this is gonna be a level seven. You need sewing skills. And I'm not talking about other crafters that are just like, oh, you can glue it up. No, we're gonna sew it. You're gonna have to know how to sew. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, let's go over what you need. So what you need is obviously your fabric, and I chose to do fleece because I like the feel of fleece on pillows better. And then you'll need batting, so some kind of stuffing, usually unbonded stuffing, needle, pins, and then a large bowl. Okay, so what you're gonna do is fold your fabric in half and then put your large bowl over it. And then I got a black and blue marker. And then you'll trace out your big bowl. Then after you trace that, I actually pinned around it to make sure the fabric didn't move on me when I started cutting. And then I cut out each of my circles. I just like traced on each three of my fabrics. And then I set those aside and then I took the white circle that I just like cut and then the red circle I just like cut. And I literally just folded them in half and cut them. So then what I did is put them on top of each other and then did a quick stitch. And then the really hard part is making your black stripe and then your center ball. This one actually took me some time. I probably spent like an hour just doing this part. I actually measured my black strip that goes through the middle to be about like two inches and then I cut and gave it some weight. So that way when I folded it and gave it its edge, that way I could have a little bit extra then it gets smaller, everything gets smaller as you sew it. So folded it, pinned it, and then did a quick stitch up and down. And I know I made these quite longer than they needed to be, but I always like to have excess and just cut it off and run out of my strip and not have enough. And then I found a styrofoam cup in my house and then a normal cup. I'll make sure there's a little bit of a difference in like diameter between them or else it won't look good. And just cut those out. And then I went and I took the black circle and the white circle and put them on top of each other and I kind of cleaned up the edges a little bit and then I sewed the white circle onto the black circle. And then the next thing you're going to do is put all your pieces together. So I actually made this front first piece first before I added it to the back piece because you don't want to have to worry about trying to get this black strip on before you sew two pieces together. So take your white and white and red strip that you just place sew together and then put your black belt on it and also your circle you just barely made. And then I actually just did a couple hand stitches. I just hand sewed this in. So I did a couple little stitches here and there just to make sure it's on. I didn't actually go in and sew all the way around because I kind of don't really like the line that it gave when I was starting to sew around it. So I didn't want to give it another line. So I just kind of stitched it. And you know what? It actually worked pretty good. You know, it's on there. It's not like someone's gonna come and yank it. Yeah, I can put my finger through it. You're not supposed to, be able to do that. But I can't. In case I wanted to hide my Pokemon cards in here. <laughs> this is gonna be can my I hide new your poke weed in there. <laughs> poke weed. Ew! Don't do drugs. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> but you could put your little keychains in here too. Don't do it. Don't do it those things to forever. I'm not touching them ever again. I'm leaving them right there. <laughs> and then once you get that all hand stitched on there, then you will attach it to your black circle piece that you cut out. So you only need one black circle. I know you cut out two because you fold the fabric like I told you to do in the first of this, but just get one of them. And then make sure 
to put the two sides that you want on the front sandwiched in the middle because when you turn it inside out, that's what or it's gonna be showing. So you kinda have to think about it. So once you get that pinned on, then you're going to give it a little bit of like, I don't really know what to call these, they're just like little cuts all over. And this way it gives, make sure the pillow can actually kinda like stretch and like form as you're putting the stuffing in. And then once you get that done, then you go ahead and sew it. And sewing circles, I mean, just watch the lines on the sewing machine. It's not too, not too bad, just take your time. Don't go crazy. Don't just floor it. It's scary. Have you seen Annabelle? Did you see the part where she got her finger like stuck in the spot? How do you do that? You can't just stick your finger there. Doesn't make sense. So yeah, once you get that done, make sure to leave a little spot where you did not sew so you can put your stuffing in. Cause you're gonna be really sad when you sew all the way around it and then you realize, I need a hole to turn it inside out and put my stuffing in. Think about that when you're sewing it. Make sure to get like I would even think like an inch and a half of a little hole for you to do it in. It's kind of hard, but it works. And then just start stuffing it. And then once you get it stuffed, then I did. I think it's called like a ladder stitch, where you go instead of sewing up and down, you sew sideways. Does that make sense? So here's my big giveaway I'm doing to my 19 subscribers. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> mom. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> there you guys are. So I'm gonna be giving away one of these pokey pillows and then my string art Pikachu. So what you need to be we need to what you need to do to enter into this giveaway is to make sure you're subscribed and then comment down below what your favorite craft is. Yes, people do this to comment down below. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you're subscribed and then comment down below what your favorite craft was out of this series. And then, yeah. Let's pick a date when I'm gonna announce my winner. And then I'll send this to you and you'll be like, wow, Alexa made this for me. I did, I made it for you. Two weeks from today is the 5th of August. The 5th of August. I will announce who won and I'll probably do it over, maybe I'll do it over my Instagram. I don't know. Let's say I'll do it over my Twitter. So I'll link my Twitter down below and all my social links to make sure to go follow those because then I'll update you anytime I do a craft or anything else I do. I'm a pretty busy person. Yeah. So make sure to go do that or else you'll get this cute pillow and this fabulous string art and I'll even sign it for you because I'm such a celebrity. <laughs> make sure to subscribe. I need love. <laughs> <laughs>